This is a full replica portal gun that you could easily build by an amazing page by Everett on Thingiverse right now. And I'm gonna go through step-by-step step on how to make your own replica portal gun with changing LEDs. This is, I think, the best DIY project you can do. Now, I want to immediately get it off the rip. I'm gonna turn this off. This is not my design at all. Everything you see in this entire replica was created, assembled, detailed, instructed by Everett on Thingiverse. His links will be everywhere. There's three different versions. One was the old original one in 2019. This is version two that I made. And then version three also is a kind of a different design and includes speakers and kind of like an ambient humming noise, which I think would be a really fun next project to do. So thank you Everett for all the amazing work that you've been doing to allow me to build one of my dream just replicas I've always wanted. Please know that this build does actually require a little bit of wiring. It's more just soldering different parts together, making sure all the electrical connections are fine. Um, it does need a lithium battery. So anytime you're working with something like that, you do need to be careful because there always is the risk of it exploding. I haven't really ever soldered before. I did it a little bit in college, um, but have it since. I got a pretty easy $35 soldering kit off of Amazon and was able to just kind of mess around with it a little bit. And it, it just takes practice. Let's start with the materials that you're gonna need for this entire project. You only need two types of filament and that's white and black. You'll need a minimum of two kilograms of black filament and one kilogram of white. An acrylic pipe is needed along with an acrylic rod, some five millimeter black cable, and a sheet's worth of light diffuser. While the electronics are completely optional, I would heavily recommend going for it. The electronics are listed as follows. One Arduino Nano, two buttons, one soldering board, a couple DPDT switches, a 3.7 volt lithium battery, one RGB LED, a male mini USB connector, your favorite arrangement of wires, a 150 and 120 ohm resistor, one ring LED, at least four single LEDs, a USB-C breakout, and a power boost 500 charger, which I think is the hardest one to get out of all of these electronics. Last but not least, all the miscellaneous things that you kind of need. A multimeter is definitely nice, but not required. I personally would really recommend getting some good 3D printing glue, along with some sandpaper to glue those parts together easier, and also with some help with painting. Some kind of fine tooth saw or a rotary drill to cut the acrylic pipe and rod. A soldering kit, like I mentioned before, and very last but most optional, primer, white glossy paint, and black matte paint. I would start with all the electronics first. The electronics you can basically finish to like 95% and then you install it through the entire portal gun. So. If you're a little bit wary on, I'm gonna put this down over here. If you're a little iffy on electronics and wiring, I would just heavily suggest starting with that first. Once you have the wiring done, you basically just assemble everything together in a final step. I would heavily recommend actually printing out the sheet that Everett gives you. Of course, he just has everything. Cause it's one of those things where if you're a little iffy on it, it's easy to like mark down the wires that you've soldered, the wires that you have connected, and also to be able to double check the lengths of the wire that you are putting together. Cause especially for the LED parts, it does matter a pretty good amount. I finally got all of this connected. This, this was not easy. <laughs> Four single LEDs and then at the end connected to a ring LED. And then this end connects to the Arduino Nano. It was six solders per part. That was just kind of a pain to do. I, I'm not great at soldering. This is my first time, but it's still, man, it was tricky and just, I don't know, they're, they're very small. So I'm glad I did it first to get it over with. When I actually finished wiring everything together, one, I was certain it wasn't gonna work. So when it did work, first try and I was actually able to upload the code that Everett gives you to the Arduino Nano and to be able to use the two buttons to switch the LEDs from blue to orange. 
I was shocked. The Arduino Nano currently plugged in. Yes, I'm a very bad painter. No, I'm a very good painter. I have it plugged in to my PC. I unplugged it just obviously. Let's connect it to the breakout. And then using the code provided on GitHub, I was just able to use like the Arduino web, web page browser, select Nano, making sure that you're using this processor and then using the code on GitHub found right here for version two. Make sure it's not any of the previous or uh, future versions. This one's for number two specifically that I'm doing. Uploaded it, um, nothing went wrong. And I guess now it's time to plug it back into the battery to see what happens. Whoa. No way, No, uh there's no shot. It worked for a second. Did you see that? What the hell? So it's kind of working. Obviously, there's some connectors that are not great and this little red LED is not working. But that worked for a second. I'm like amazed. It, it's like kind of, it's like 75% there. It switches with the buttons. Let's see. Yeah, this one's red or this one's orange and then this one's blue. So that's right. Only weird thing is, is that it's sometimes like not really responsive. And I feel like when I switch it, like right now, that should just turn it off. Like that should be a kill switch. And then when I turn it on, that's when I should be able to switch back and forth between this. But right now, it's always on. It was like, it was like a C plus kind of wiring setup, I would, I would say. For some reason, the on off switch didn't work. It instead would just either make the LEDs brighter or dimmer. So once the battery was connected, I couldn't turn it on and off. So that was my first problem. And another one was there's a little like LED bulb to indicate if the um, if you turn on and off like the Arduino Nano. That didn't work for some reason either. So the biggest thing was the battery because at the end of the day, once everything's assembled, you kind of don't want to take it apart. You should be able to charge the battery via the back of it. It's not something you can kind of like disassemble and assemble easily. You can, but it's not what it's built for. So first thing I had to kind of fix after I finished all my wiring was getting it to be able to turn on and off so I didn't just waste the battery right away. So I just use um, one of the DPDT switches that you already have through the build. I, I, I snipped the lithium battery uh, positive and negative charge and then wired them to the switch itself and then wired that switch to the Arduino Nano so that was kind of the cutoff point for on and off and it works great I made oh, dude it's such a rat's nest it's not good I made the following changes which so I switched this battery instead of connecting directly because this switch wasn't working but there isn't an opening for that switch. So I just literally used like a drill bit that you would for like cutting a hole in wood and then just hand twisted until I made a hole wide enough and then glued an extra switch on the back. So I made my own little switch port for it. And then the LED that indicates if the portal gun is on or off, I didn't, since it didn't work and I had everything else working at that point, I just got rid of. So I didn't actually end up using that in my final build. So that was mine. It's a little, if you get the wiring to work perfectly on your first try, good on you. I don't know why mine didn't work, but I didn't want to just start diagnosing and taking apart bits. And it's like, I had the base of it to work. And if I could just put an easy switch on it, Sometimes the best answer is the easiest one. I think that's a Portal 2 line, actually. The best solution to a problem is usually the easiest one. And I'll be honest, killing you is hard. I'm getting inspired with that back there. Hopefully it's not too distracting. Once I had all the wiring done, it was then time to move to the actual painting and assembly of the Portal gun. Yeah, I'll grab it. The claws here are pretty easy to assemble. It's just two glued on together parts and then two parts that are screwed in with the M3 screw set that everything will be linked down that you need to make this build in the description. So I made three sets of those. This giant white part comes in two different prints, but you can actually just screw them together or glue depending on what you prefer. I think screwing was just a little easier. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then this white part is just separated on its own. So I wanted to set up everything and just kind of paint it in as little as I could. I didn't want to paint each part separately because I didn't know what would mess with the gluing. I didn't know if it would mess with the assembly. So I wanted to get everything together as I could. This is like where the wires are all at. So this was separate. I didn't paint this. It's not necessary because you don't really see it. But from these middle section parts that kind of enclose this acrylic rod right here was probably the most difficult to kind of put together. Mostly because this acrylic tube was pretty easy to cut, I would say. Um, I just used a pretty fine tooth handsaw and then sanded it after I cut it to the length I wanted. But this acrylic rod in the middle here, my it was either my print's fault or the acrylic rod I bought, but it was just like a millimeter too thick or too large in diameter, which I didn't think was gonna be a big problem. But I probably, probably spent a good hour and a half to two hours straight just sanding and sanding and more sanding. And I sanded it even more, if you could believe it, for about two hours until I was able to fit it within this diameter. Obviously, if it's too short, it won't fit and it will just fall. But if it's too long, there's LEDs on either side that have to fit over it. So you have to kind of have it in a pretty, like you have to cut it to a pretty specified part. And since I had to sand it, I had to sand basically the whole thing down in a smaller diameter, which took quite a while. I had this entire black uh, middle section assembled and then I taped right around the acrylic as much as I could and then taped all other parts, kind of like the top, the bottom, parts that weren't necessary to fully paint. All right, there it is. This is the last thing I had to tape. It is two in the morning. Um, I'm gonna put all this down and then tomorrow I'll paint it and then assemble it and should be done. Um, so that was one whole section and then the nozzle on top was its own little part. I primed everything. Um, honestly, the black part, I wouldn't say is the most necessary to paint. It still looks good if you do, but 100% these two white larger pieces, a thousand percent recommend painting it a nice glossy white color. It just makes the portal gun look that much more like aperture, more like sci-fi futuristic. I think the gloss turned out better. Like it, it makes the build so much better. So with everything painted, with the acrylic in place, the electronics done, it was kind of time for the final assembly. I assembled this main black middle part first because uh, the white just get glued on at the end. The electronics were placed in I, <laughs> I didn't use the soldering board at all that it recommends. I just glued things where I could to have it fit together. It's a complete wire nest in here, so I never want to open it up and see it again. Um, I'm sure the footage is just traumatizing to anyone who's actually done any bit of electrical engineering yourself or soldering. I bet it's awful to watch. I do apologize. And then there's four LEDs. The first LED gets run up to the top here which uses another clear sheet. I would recommend sanding because it looks really good to not be able to see the LED, but to get like the color effect of it. The second LED then is attached by like a little claw holder that you can just use epoxy over to glue it. Gets glued on the bottom here. I guess I can turn it on to actually show you. So the first LED is this top one here. That looks pretty good with it sanded on top. The next one is at the bottom of the base of the acrylic rod. And through this middle section here runs the next two LEDs. Um, the third one is at the base here. When I said at the beginning, you have to kind of um, wire about 95% of it, the LED ring at the very end of everything will not actually fit through um, this little uh, hollow part of the build. So you have to solder it at the very end. I would recommend taking just like a little bit of time to solder like a little pin connector of the LED ring because at the end of it, it can get kind of hard to mess with when you have these wires sticking through, through, you're trying to glue them, and then you're also trying to solder at the end of it. And it just taking a little bit of time to make a little pin connector for the LED ring, I would 100% recommend. And then that ring and also final LED gets placed at the nozzle at the end. The nozzle fits on the end of it and twists tight. I glued it to give it a, make it a little more secure. And so you kind of had the whole foundation of the portal gun completed. No way. <laughs> Dude, I'm so happy with it. I just have to glue it all together now. Yay! 
Yay! So once that's done, uh, the final bit of it is honestly pretty easy. This white part gets um, screwed on the top. I ended up just gluing it just because the screwing process wasn't... <laughs> oh boy, I need different words. I just ended up gluing this uh, top part uh, instead of using the screws. This bottom part glues pretty easily. Um, the three different claws are then attached to the black part and also two on the white base. So the claws are all attached and then you have this final little um, wiring. It's just for show, it doesn't do anything. I have um, like an old N64 controller or not an actual one, just one I got on Amazon. And it has, it, it was like the right thickness for it. If you have a controller, chargers, wires, you could probably scrounge up anything you need for it. And then once you glue that from the claws to this white base, you have a really just amazing portal gun that is just like the it, it, i just absolutely love it the feeling of like finally putting it together turning it on and being able to flick from blue to orange and everything i mean there's just nothing like holding an actual portal gun the way like your hand goes in it, it it's just such a unique design and i absolutely absolutely 100 percent. i had a voice crack there i'm so enthusiastic about this if you're slightly interested in portal if you want kind of a more intermittent style diy project with wiring kind of push your boundaries if you're not familiar with it if you are this will be a cakewalk and honestly just an absolute pleasure to make because of how much work everett did to make a step-by-step -step building assembly for the wiring the coding the assembly everything hey it's okay. You get so excited. I'll shoot you. 100% would recommend making this 3D printed portal gun. And I, it's going to have to go somewhere on my wall. I don't know <laughs> where I'm going to put it quite yet. But hopefully this video helped you if any, if to either get inspired to make this because I think everyone should. Or if you're having problems following through it, um, through the Thingiverse, even though it's so great. Sometimes it's obviously just easier to see someone else make it to give you some little bit of advice. I'll try to help everyone out. Again, out in the comments, if you have any questions, let me know. Yes, please build this. It was so much fun. I'll see you guys for whatever next build I have in mind next. Uh, this one definitely took a little bit of time. Sorry for how long it took me to get another video out. Um, Thank you so much and build this. And thank you, Everett, for making the best thing you've ever design of all time. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not on. <laughs>